Well, citizens of TG, gather round, get yourselves a pint, warm up by the fire, and stop ogling the damn whores for a second so I can tell you the story of the best elf I've ever had the fortune of playing, Patrick O'Clehan. Old Patrick wasn't your typical elf, he was an orphan. See, don't worry, ain't anything secret or special about his heritage, that'd be far too trite. But Pad was an elf left in the big city, a world of humans and machines and grimy poverty. Well, the other kids around him didn't take too well to him, started calling him names, started trying to ambush and beat him, and Patrick didn't have the sharp tongue or the wits to get out of that sort of life, so he adapted, see, well, Patrick fought back. The clerics in charge of the orphanage would often find themselves healing up teenage boys with snapped jaws, broken ribs, and black eyes. One thing all these lil ruffians had in common? They tried messing with Patrick. Well, Pat wasn't keen on spending his years waiting on some humans to adopt him, so he turned his brawn to good use, found himself a job down at the docks, and that's where he met her. He didn't really think much of her at first, just another human lass, probably there to stare at the oddity of an elf, or maybe one of them rich girls jiggling at the work the poor had to do. Turns out he was wrong on both accounts. Ya yeah, wanna know about her? Her name was Mary, and that's about all the information you need. She ain't the focal point of the story. She and Pat got married, had a gorgeous lil girl with her father's hair and her mother's eyes, oh, and one day she wound up disemboweled in her home. Well, Patrick didn't take too well to that, started drinking, started getting more aggressive and a hell of a lot more defensive. Turns out that his natural aptitude for breaking noses and beating down humans was only amplified by the almost lethal doses of ale and whiskey he could force down his throat. And then they found his wife's killer. See, that isn't the end of the story, only the beginning. Turns out he was some insane cultist. Ya know the kind. The cultists who do all sorts of necromatic rituals. Well, Pat started pointing fingers at anyone religious. If ya worshipped a god, in Pat's eyes, ya were no better than the man who killed his wife. Well, Pat was pretty vocal and pretty aggressive about all that god hat and stuff. One day, one of his drunken rants rubbed a passing by paladin the wrong way. Most brutal bar fight you've ever seen. Took a homeless architect, a thief on the lam, and a stranded apprentice spellslinger type to break them apart. Well, meet Patrick's best friends for the next year or so. So, as fate would have it, they all had something against that cult. Pat obviously wanted his wife avenged. Paladin was hunting them down. Architect was blaming them for the bastard losing his job. Thief was framed. Mage wanted some justice of his own. As one might expect, mutual hatred is the best way to make friends. And they began tracking down as many cultists as they could for the slaughter. Course, they took Patrick's daughter along. Couldn't just leave a 4 year old girl on her own. The group was pretty fond of her, I reckon. Patrick redefined the term, Papa Bear, and anything that looked at the lil girl the wrong way got turned into a gory puddle by her pop. Paladin tried to dissuade her from listening to Patrick's anti-religious rants, Mage and Thief tried to teach her a few tricks of the trade, you get the gist. Now, one day, they find some bad news. Turns out, the cult they're following, well, their goal is to turn their leader into a living god. Same story you've heard a dozen times before. So the group goes headfirst into their unholy place of worship, intending to stop the ritual before it goes through. And as they are clevin through the undead, busting heads, incinerate in abominations, Patrick's quiet. Real quiet. Ain't like him in the least. Any fights between the party get split up by Pat rather than started by him. See, he's still drunk. Just not exclusively on ale and whiskey anymore. At the moment, or Patrick's drunk on hate. If that thief couldn't pick a lock, Patrick would simply bash down a door. Speaking of which, bam, the door to the cult leaders in a sanctum comes tumbling down, and the party storms in, swords drawn, spells ready to be flung, lil girl in the back. Turns out they're too late. Rituals finished, cult leader, or god of darkness turns, power crackling around him, and, as one would expect, he begins his rant about how useless it was to try and fight him, it's all over, he is a god, so they lose, and that's the end of the story. Nah, I'm just screwing with you. Around halfway into that big speech, Patrick sprints over and decks the Sinuva bitch. Divine teeth and spit fly all over the place. That new god tries to say something along the lines of, you dare hit your god but that's sorta hard considering Patrick just broke the bastard's jaw. Fight to end it all begins. 
The majority of the party is busy trying to stem the horde of fanatical cultists and monsters coming to reinforce their god, but Pat and the god are going toe to toe. To no one's great surprise, the mortal heroes start to lose. Yeah, it's a bummer, just sit tight. So, Architect, Paladin, Mage, and Thief are all wounded, barely conscious, but Patrick's still slinging punches at the cult leader. The Dark God finally decides he's had enough and incinerates one of Patrick's arms. Just like that, a flash and then his arm is nothing but ash. He demands that Patrick submit to him. So, Patrick does anything but the rational thing and starts punching with his offhand. God of Evil gets pissy and incinerates the other one, Levin old Pat with two stumps. Now Bo, you LP roars. Patrick casually glances at his two missing arms and does the reasonable thing. Nah, again I'm messing with you. This is Patrick we're talking about. Pat headbutts the fucker and takes out the rest of his godly front teeth. God is beyond pissed now, and is more insistent on getting rid of this elf than he is in satisfying his ego and just wills Patrick out of existence. Poof, gone. Nothing's stopping him now. Pat is either dying or willed out of existence, so he starts spreading those all too familiar black clouds across the globe, blocking out the sun, initiating a thousand years of darkness and hate and all that and, well wait a minute, what's that? Rummaging through the wounded mage's belongings is a little red haired girl, eyes red with tears. And out of it she pulls, a scroll of wishing. Party couldn't decide what to do with it. Everyone wanted to do something crazy, from infinite wealth to bringing back Mary to wiping evil from the face of the earth. In the end, the mage just kept it, since any wish they made could go horribly wrong. But that little girl, on the verge of the apocalypse? She wishes for the one thing a little girl wishes for when everything seems lost. She wants her father back. Now, what do kids that age know about their parents? Not much, lem tell you, they get glimpses, little tidbits that they idealize. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you more knowledgeable types what happens to ideals when we start talking about high level magic, huh? Well, the darkness crackles and breaks. In the pitch that's consumed the globe, now there's one bit of light. Ain't some pansy white light, hell no. It's red as blood, full of hate and fury. Two gods are born that day, a god of darkness and a god of vengeance. Patrick steps out of that light, 10 feet tall, wings and hair of flame, muscles even bigger and harder than the original. Oh, you shoulda heard that god of evil screaming, throwing spells, ordering minions to get in his way, begging for his life. Nothing was stopping god Patrick who casually walked over, brushing everything out of his way, and crushed that egotistical fucker's head in his colossal hands. Well, you're wondering what comes next, right? You should all know that by now. God of evil dies, Patrick ascends to the heavens or wherever the hell he wanted to go, and the world went back to the way it was for the most part, for the party? Well, the mage became a politician of sorts, started advocating for the control and regulation of magic so that that cult shit never happened again, the architect? Used the fame from his adventure to catapult him into success, and eventually revolutionized that whole building art world, the thief slipped back into the shadows where he belonged, the paladin? Oh lord, you should have seen him. The guy who lost all those fist fights against Patrick over religion. All those times when they butted heads? Well, he never went back to his order. He outright abandoned them. Instead, he went and founded a new church, dedicated to a god who knew true justice. He founded the Church of Callahan, god of just retribution. And Lil Sarah Oklahan? Um, I think she's going to be my next PC when we continue this. Thanks for listening, TG. That was a nice wee heartfelt story now I have to say, but hey, like, you know, at least, look, it all turned out dead on for Patrick in the end, so that's always nice. Though, what the actual fucking heresy is an elf called Patrick O'Callaghan? <laughs> oh god, Patrick O'Callaghan, ugh, that's possibly the most taggy name I've ever heard in my whole life, like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> but, like... You know, uh, fuck, I don't know, I wouldn't have went for a Tiki Elf personally, but, like, you know, that story was nice, it was very heartfelt, and, you know, I think it had all the keynotes that I liked, uh, I, that I like in a good story anyway, you know, even though it is quite short, but, like, it's nice to do these wee 
quick like short easy videos like you know something nice and small and digestible and you know it's just something easy like you know sometimes it's you know you don't not everyone's got the time to sit down and go for like warmer 50k or the all guardsman party and they just take you know they can take months to finish you know sometimes it's nice to just do something nice and easy and short and you know simple to cover you know what i mean but like if you've got anything like this at all that you feel like you know you want me to cover it at some point you, you know shed a bit of light on the story um comment down below or join the discord i'm throwing in the submissions tab i can't tell you how long it will take me to get to that but i do get there eventually i always get there eventually like that's all i'm gonna say and uh, i'll see you in the next video see you later mate so i've recently moved nick Berdia merch over to teesprings and have a few new designs listings are below the video and in the description so i am an affiliate of nordvpn if you have been thinking of getting a VPN with everything going on at the minute NordVPN is offering 75% off a 3 year plan. I have been using Nor myself for a few years now because it helps support a lot of the people I like to watch on YouTube and I think it's pretty cool they have let me become an affiliate. So check out norvpn.org forward slash nickbeardia and use coupon code nickbeardia for 75% off while the offer is on. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services! It's time to stop!